Hey there, welcome to day one of 30 Days of Python. In this one, we need to set up your system. It's really the fundamental thing you need to do prior to actually using Python, which probably makes sense. Now, the reason we have a whole day dedicated to this is because setting up Python on your system can go really smoothly or not so much. See, when you're dealing with open source software, every once in a while, you run into roadblocks in the installation process. So I have a number of ways to actually install Python on your machine, and I'll mention those in just a moment. But before we do, python.org is where we're gonna be downloading this from. It doesn't matter what system that you're on, whether you're on a Mac, Linux, or Windows, you can actually use python.org to get Python on your local system. Now your mobile device may have a way to write Python as well, so definitely check out various mobile apps that you can write Python with too, because they do exist. So understanding and learning the fundamentals of Python means that we need Python installed on our system. Now, there are other options to write Python in the cloud. That is, on a web browser, write Python and run your Python code. All of those things can be done on colab.research.google.com. Now, this is a free service that's similar to like writing Google Docs, but it adds a little bit of complexity to actually get going. Those things I'm not really gonna be covering here. I do have a series on it, so let me know if you need help finding it. But the idea is that we need a simple and easy way to get Python going so we can get started and not get caught up in the installation process. Now, if you really want a thorough installation that's a little bit closer to what you would use professionally, check out one of these playlists and skip the rest of this video. For everybody else, let's keep going. It's time to actually download Python, install it, and run a very basic thing in Python. So go ahead and click on downloads and look for your operating system here. Don't press that big yellow button, just look for Windows, Linux, or Mac. In my case, I'm on a Mac. If you're on a Windows, it's really not a whole lot different here. So let's actually take a look at that for Windows users real quick. Um, so we wanna look under stable releases, we wanna find Python 3.8. I am gonna be using 3.8.2, but you can be using 3.8.4 or 0.5, or actually you might even be able to use 3.9 or 4.0, because a lot of the things that we're doing in this series are fundamental. They're gonna be supported for a long time. I know this because this will also work, a lot of things will work also on Python 2.7, which is a really old version of Python. Now, maybe not everything's gonna work, but by and large, what we're doing here is Python. Python has evolved, it has changed, but overall, Python is Python, and so this series will be using 3.8, but it's not really gonna be diverging too much from Python's core thing. And if it does, I'll definitely bring it up when it's like a newer feature and all that. Um, so Windows users, you're gonna download the executable installer. So you wanna make sure that your system is either a 64-bit system or a 32-bit system. Now, if you're unclear about how to find those things, definitely check those links from before and you'll be able to download Windows uh, versions of Python there. But by and large, most of you will probably have a 64-bit machine. So let's go back into our downloads for Mac OS X because I'm now gonna actually start the installation process and I'm gonna download my 64-bit installer. Most of you Mac users will also have that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and you're gonna see something like this. This is a standard application installer and you can just install everything here as usual as you would with pretty much any software program. So naturally it's gonna ask you to you know, type in your password and all that. Don't worry about customizations or anything like that. You can just go through all of the defaults. That's for both kinds of systems. Um, and the reason for this is because Python is open source software. So we can always update to the, the next version and change those little customizations later. You don't have to worry about customizing it right now. It's just a simple fact, which is really nice. So now that Python is installed, we have this program called idle. So what idle does is allow me to actually run Python on my system. So when I open this up, it will launch into a Python shell. That's what it's called. Don't worry if you don't remember the terms, we are gonna say them over and over again, so you'll definitely start to learn them as we go forward. So if I open up idle, this is what I see, right? Yours will be maybe a little bit smaller, but this is the Python shell. So we got Python 3.8.2, 
and now I can write some Python co code. That's pretty cool. So, so we've got everything installed. We're ready to go. We're ready for day two overall. But let's actually write our first command. And I'm going to do 10 star 10 and hit enter. And there we go. We get the, the result of 100. Not groundbreaking, but it is certainly cool that now we can write some Python code. And I can say something like ABC equals to 123. And then I can print out ABC. Pretty sweet. So that's a few lines of Python, maybe your first foray into writing Python. Super excited for you. So that's it for the installation process of Python. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you in day two.